Hello and welcome to our worship today. Today we are going to be thinking about some maybe prophetic words for our lives and for the future. And I've chosen a phrase just to introduce it from our gospel reading that simply says, in a little while you're going to see me. I'm alive. And then it says also, you're about to come alive. Well, I'm, I'm hoping that you all still are alive and well and, and doing your thing. But just dwell on those words for a little bit today. In what ways can we, if you like, come alive again? Because I think it's a bit of a promise for our waiting world. Things are beginning to move again. The world is waking up and there's activity, albeit sometimes slowly. And we have to do that maybe with caution. Not yet, but soon. We need to be ready, don't we, to come alive. And today we are given some clear guidelines in how we can enable that. So as we come and share in our worship together, let's remember those words. Come alive. Our call to worship. Let's join together in a great hymn of faith. To God be the glory.
In a moment we're going to hear our readings for today but I just wanted to just point you to a phrase in in this song about giving God the glory for the great things he has done. Following on with my introduction to the theme of positivity, this actually declares that we will give him the glory for the great things that he has done. So when you hear the readings, hear that call. The reading is taken from Psalm 66, verses 8 to 20, the message version. Bless our God, O peoples. Give him a thunderous welcome. Didn't he set us on the road to life? Didn't he keep us out of the ditch? He trained us first, passed us like silver through refining fires, brought us into hard scrabble country, pushed us to our very limit, road tested us inside and out, took us to hell and back. Finally, he brought us to this well-watered place. I'm bringing my prizes and presents to your house. I'm doing what I said I'd do. What I solemnly swore I'd do that day when I was in so much trouble. The choicest cuts of meat for the sacrificial meal. Even the fragrance of roasted lamb is like a meal. Or make it an ox garnished with goat meat. All believers come here and listen. Let me tell you what God did for me. I called out to him with my mouth. My tongue shaped the sounds of music. If I had been cosy with evil, the Lord would never have listened. But he must, most surely did listen. He came on the double when he heard my prayer. Blessed be God. He didn't turn a deaf ear. He stayed with me, loyal in his love. Amen. John 14, 15 to 21 The Spirit of Truth If you love me, show it by doing what I've told you. I will talk to the Father, and he'll provide you another friend, so that you will always have someone with you. This friend is the Spirit of Truth. The godless world can't take him in, because it doesn't have eyes to see him, doesn't know what to look for. But you know him already, because he has been staying with you, and will even be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I'm coming back in just a little while. The world will no longer see me, but you're going to see me because I am alive and you're about to come alive. At that moment, you will know absolutely that I'm in my father and you're in me and I'm in you. The person who knows my commandments and keeps them, that's who loves me. And the person who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and make myself plain to him. Amen. We're now going to sing In the Darkness of the Still Night, a beautiful hymn by Margaret Rissa.
And so our word for today. It's not often that I preach on the Psalms, but during these weeks of lockdown, there have been somewhat of a go between a place to go to for the rent and a place to go to for that sense of reorientation. Last Sunday, we reflected on our actions matching our words. And I don't know whether you spotted them, but in Psalm 66, there were lots of actions. We have to sing and make a joyful noise. That's difficult alone. We have to say. We have to find the words. We have to come and see. And we have to bless. All of these things are very positive things to do. And so that's one of our first challenges for this week. To be positive. And I guess I challenging you to see if you can accomplish all of those things this week. Make a joyful noise, sing, say, come and see and bless. The, the psalmist points us to what God has done for us and maybe you can make a list of what God has done for you so that you can share it so that you'll have something to say. I think you might be surprised it's also written within the text that God brought his people through fire and water to a spacious place, a place of peace and of restoration. So we must again believe that that is where we're going, to that spacious place where we will be restored. I'm really keen that we should understand this message because there's so much negativity around in the news and someone needs to be positive. Our gospel reading is from that familiar passage from John which begins with do not let your hearts be troubled, do not be worried and upset and different variations on that thing. Um, and that Jesus leaves with us peace. But the part I'm going to spend the time on is not those words. It's another part, because again, we're given a promise. I'll not leave you. I'll not allow you to be on your own. And I won't leave you with nothing. And we're instructed to look forward to that time when there will be a helper. Now, Jesus was instructing his disciples then. We've heard of this helper. We've heard of the Holy Spirit and sometimes maybe we don't rely upon the Holy Spirit enough. The Holy Spirit is an advocate, one who enables us to speak, one who enables us to be joyful and one who helps us to sustain our faith. The message version of this reading begins with the words, um, don't let things throw you. And you know, we as humans let a lot of things throw us, don't we? 
we're thrown by circumstances and we're thrown by the way things are at the moment. But this passage is pointing us to concentrate on a time of preparation as an expression of our faith. All the positive things mentioned in the psalm and Jesus said, John reports, if you love me, show it by doing. Remember what I've told you and I will take care of things. So be reminded today that God's Spirit is with us. The early disciples, when they were told this, hadn't yet experienced that. We're reminded of the spirit of truth. And John actually goes on to say, doesn't he, that those who keep the faith have such an advantage above those who don't. We're to stick at it, bearing in mind that we know him already. I figure that that is saying to us, I know you're struggling, I know it's hard, I know that things seem interminable, can't say the word, interminable, but be aware of Jesus in you and don't be thrown by the temporary. And if you forgive the cliche, I'll remind you of those words. We must walk through the storm with our heads held high and not be afraid of the dark. When we come through it, we will learn and see and know so much more. We just have to be prepared to weather it and use this time constructively to get ready. Do you know what I think? Well, I think that the church is now being shaped and pre prepared ahead of time for something far greater than what we can ever imagine right now. I'm going to finish with the command right at the end of the chapter, which we haven't heard read today, but says, get up, let's go, it's time to leave here. Could it be that we are being led to that spacious place that is mentioned in the psalm, a spacious place of new adventures, of new beginnings for people of faith? Pentecost is on its way. That's the time that we look forward to that extra special excitement. And of course, as Methodists, we will be celebrating the day, the anniversary when the Wesley's hearts were strangely warmed. Meanwhile, say stay, stay safe, get ready, look forward in hope. And remember too that those disciples were still behind the locked doors 40 days later and then Pentecost happened and even they didn't expect what was to come. May we be prepared and expectant of what is to come. And they all said, Amen. So, Amen, and let's move on in hope. Gracious God, we hold before you our world, where there is fear bring peace. Where there is doubt and uncertainty, bring ways forward. Where there is hunger, provide food. Where there is sadness, bring joy. Loving Lord, we hold before you humanity. Where there is suffering, bring healing. Where there are tears, bring smiles. In death, bring new life and new beginnings. In conflict in relationships, bring understanding and reconciliation. Lord of all wisdom, we hold before you those who are leaders in these days of uncertainty. We pray for wise decisions 
and joined up thinking. We pray for words that encourage and build up and have clarity. We pray that people will make the right choices that do not endanger others. God of the way, the truth and the life, help us all to hold fast to your promises. May we stick to your way, may we see and know you, may we rejoice in your presence, may we be loyal in love, may we be ready to share your story. May your kingdom come. Amen. Amen. We say together the prayer that Jesus invites us to say. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn is a new hymn that you probably never sung before, but I chose it because it's a, a, a song that takes us into nature, it takes us outside, and it speaks to me of that spacious place that I mentioned in my talk for today. I also like the words that it talks about health in God's garden and hope in God's children. and that it asks Christ to reconnect us to him, using us gently, but making us one. Touch the earth lightly. Don't be surprised by the second verse because it goes into a different key and it's a bit tricky to play. again.